Hi, thanks for tuning in to Turn to the Stars. I thank you for uh, watching today and joining us as we have again today uh, Sharon Ward joining us from the other side of the world from Guernsey and the British Isles. And welcome, Sharon. Hi there. Hello, everybody. Hello, Andrea. Hi, Sharon. How are you today? I'm very good. How are you? We're, we're doing quite well over here, and I, I just think it's so much fun to have Sharon joining us on Turn to the Stars. Um, you know, I, I always talk about, I think it's just so awesome that we can bring two sides of the world together and share this experience and bring this uh, astrological insight to our public and, and the people that support us watching Turn to the Stars. And um, today we are going to be talking with Sharon. Sharon and I are going to be discussing the eclipses of the spring of 2013. We actually have two lunar eclipses and one solar eclipse. And uh, with the partial uh, lunar eclipse, which is the first uh, lunar eclipse, occurring on April 25th. And uh, this lunar eclipse, which you can see up on this chart, um, is actually um, it's down in the bottom left corner of the chart. And it there we go. And th that lunar eclipse, you can see the crescent of the moon. And it's at 5 degrees Scorpio, right next to the planet Saturn, which you heard us talk about in Scorpio last week on the show. And this is what we call a, a north node eclipse, meaning that it is taking us into a new direction. And um, it's it's the lunar eclipses are typically um, about the public and about the emotions and and it causes what we call s soul stirrings and uh, uh, Sharon and I have been talking about these eclipses and um, you know what influences they may bring to us and absolutely yeah and you know, I, I think the North Node eclipse is very exciting it's symbolic of a new start um, a fresh start and I, I kind of always think about eclipses as being kind of a cosmic reboot if you like Andrea yes. they kind of close everything off for a second and restart it and it's very much so with the North Node eclipse it's like a refresh and uh, somebody's hit the refresh button we've all got another opportunity to try something new territory a new direction and a new beginning which is very exciting isn't it yeah, I like that. I like that the way you've uh, described that as a yeah, re kind of refresh. Like the old off bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is, and and you know it's interesting because this lunar eclipse um, it, it is visible over Europe, Asia, Africa, and Australia, and um, yeah. it is not a total lunar eclipse. It's a partial lunar eclipse, and uh, so what it what it is influencing is. Uh, emotions and and as Sharon said that refresh or re uh, generation of you know yes. it, it is certainly big change that's for sure absolutely and uh, yes, I, I think the Scorpio is, is, is a regenerative sign a regenerative sign anyway so we've got the end of a phase because it's a lunar eclipse we've got the beginning of something really fresh and it is very much uh, the phoenix from the ashes isn't it so very much will come up from the ashes with something new um, and, and people will feel personally and on an emotional level as though some things ha have completed and there has been a, a full circle if you like but that the new things that begin will be will be hopefully on a better footing and people will have and will find they have strength even when they, they believe they haven't they'll find the resources to cope with whatever happens with it to them and then they can move on on a higher level yeah yeah that it that um it certainly you know lunar eclipses do bring us that sense of fullness that sense of something has completed and something something has come to light and something ending something is ending and it may be in in how you relate to the world and uh, how you move forward and there's certainly many benefits that will come through this full light um, this full yeah. moon lunar eclipse and uh, uh, you know I, I we look at this in the in the universal chart on this lunar eclipse and we see that it is in this particular area of the chart which encourages us to communicate and to talk about yeah. these things that are changing because we certainly do not want to keep them trapped inside and no no it's very much about bringing things up isn't it it's very much about allowing the external world um, to act as a channel, if you like, for the power that lives within us. 
most definitely. I think that um, th- this this eclipse is very much about a transformation. It's a change and an ending of something, but it will be replaced by something better. And it's time that we, we took our power and, and we, we, we realized and recognized that we can use it. Yes, absolutely. And and it's, it's interesting because, um, you know, this is the particular area of the chart where we see this lunar eclipse occurring universally overall is that we are dispersing uh, and talking about times of change, you know, about things that are changing in our lives, things that are affecting our families, things that are affecting our relatives and those that are close to us. And it certainly yeah, our is... Our relationships will be challenged really, um, because they're reflective of our own internal energy as well. So they'll change and they'll go through transformations as we do as individuals. I, I think uh, most definitely, I think for Scorpios, it'll be very much coming from the core or from the self. Yes. Uh, and how the core identity responds to life. And this will then in turn impact upon Scorpionic relationships or the relationships that Scorpios are going through. Uh, for Taurus, they might, may find that the people that they're in relationships with may show them the transformation and the change, and that in turn will affect their own mode of expression. So it'll affect all the fixed signs slightly differently, but it will still have an effect which changes them at a very basic and very um, profound level, ultimately, won't it? Yeah, abs- I think so. I think so that really is a really good way of describing it because um, we, Sharon and I were talking prior to the show about the Sabian symbols, which are another way of providing insight um, into these particular degrees of the constellation. With this lunar eclipse occurring at 5 degrees and 43 minutes in Eastern Standard Time of, uh, of Scorpio, it does provide us or offers us this symbol of the gold rush, a gold rush which tears a Men, men away from their native soil. So it certainly is going to pick us up from one place and show us the light, a new light of, of you know, where, where we're going to be going um, yeah. re- relative, yeah. right, to our, our lives and where we're going to travel. And it's interesting, too, because next week on April 11th, we have a new moon in, um, in Aries. And that new moon is 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 beginning a new theme for all of us um a new uh, right a new theme a new beginning and very much going to be affecting us you know ourselves aries is about the self and about the self uh, acknowledgement and definitely and self-realization and an understanding of your own independent role within the world and your own empowerment Right. As an individual, not just as a collective, definitely. Right, right, and and it it, it 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 really travels quite fast. The theme of this energy, Aries, is not one that sits still. It's constantly moving ahead, trying new things. So you know, there's new things in our path, and that as we. Yes, which, which, yeah, I'm sorry, Andrea. Yes, that, that's very exciting <laughs> because with the, with the with the energy of the Scorpio and the Saturn retrograde in Scorpio, that can feel kind of blocked and stagnant. With the new moon, that will give everybody a sense of progress. I think, which will be very refreshing for people. Right. Right, right. It's sort of like, uh, you know, what? Uh, just like spring shows her face. When, when, when she shows yeah. her face, we, we welcome the warmth and the, the newness of it. And that's sort of yeah. like the theme of this new moon. And as every day that light of that moon grows uh, bigger and the influence and the experiences in our life grow uh, bigger. And uh, as we get to that fullness of light where that lunar eclipse occurs on... Um, let me see. That's uh, April twenty fifth. Um, yeah, amazing. Yeah, that's we really good. also. I think on a world level, Andrea. I think it, it, when you look at the chart, it, it's a pretty. It's a pretty strong energy, isn't it? I think the presence of Saturn and Pluto in this lunar eclipse chart on the twenty fifth is, is pretty tough. I mean, I kind of feel it, it, instinctively when I was looking at the chart that there was a kind of sense of authorities, maybe in the past and the recent past, having a kind of lack of compassion and people perhaps. The, the, common people, if you like, being ridden over in order to achieve aims for the the authorities to achieve a sense of power or control. Mm -hmm. And I think that in the recent past, sort of underhand behavior has has maybe perhaps led to suffering, um, which has been ignored or buried. But I think now, looking at this chart and this eclipse, there's a kind of hope, there's a real ray of sunshine coming, glinting through the clouds. Yes, Um, yes. The presence of Venus in this this chart. 
chart in its own sign, and, and also the really positive connections from Neptune, which is, as we know, connected to compassion, show that to me there's another body or organisation that will counter those who lack love or sensitivity. And, and I, I really get the feeling that something good is going to happen, that someone will speak out, and the past will catch up with those who've done harm, uh, and there'll be something, a change, which will remind us that we can draw on the past in order to move more productively into the future. But I kind of really get the sense that something will be uncovered and that will bring positive effects for everybody personally and worldwide. I, you know, I was thinking about that this morning with an, uh, an experience I was having and, and I was thinking exactly about what, you're, what you just described so, so okay. nicely is, is compassion and that there's going to be yeah. this restructuring or regeneration or uh, yeah. there's going to be uh, ways that we can, uh, you know, more identify that, you know... Th- th- yeah. They, they, sometimes we have to go through the darkness to understand that we yes. need the light. And sometimes yes. we have to go through um, quite harsh times. For instance, in this chart with the Mars opposing the Saturn, that's a very restrictive energy. Sometimes it's only when we're presented with restriction that we recognize that we need compassion in order to break free, in order to move from structures or situations that have perhaps held people back or repressed or suppressed them. Yeah, and, and, and one of the things that I really think is important is that we don't jump pra- past the acknowledgement of the feelings that, that we have, that we don't, uh, you know, escape or run from them because um, in order to understand them, in order to draw from them, uh, we, we need to acknowledge them. And, um, yeah, we need to delve down, don't we, Andrea? Absolutely. Yeah. Spot on there, absolutely. Right. That we need to acknowledge them, and by acknowledging them, we connect with them, and, and you can only use the tool if you're touching it. That's right. <laughs> it is so <laughs> true. Leaving in a box in the attic because it's going to do nobody any good whatsoever. We have to, we have to reach in, we have to grab those tools, and we have to hold them in front of us. And that way, we'll bring forth all the good things that the eclipse can bring if we're positive, compassionate, and loving. Right. Absolutely. And and there's there's no substitute for kindness and compassion, and and especially in times of change. And uh, yeah. which which leads me to um, move on here so that we can uh, talk about the solar eclipse because solar eclipses are are by far um, uh, I believe they're more powerful influencing us um, as far as change and these yeah. right and and the solar eclipses that we have um, uh, approaching which is May 9th um, is in Taurus and it is at 19 degrees of Taurus and it is what we call a south node eclipse and this is an annular partial uh, partial solar eclipse which is visible from northern Australia and the southern Pacific. Now um, we have that on the screen at this time, that solar eclipse and uh, you can see that like down one, two, three, four, about four, four o'clock if you're uh, you can see a whole cluster of planets dancing together, and it really, it really does look like the the planet. The chart is very active there, Sharon, and uh, um, the South Node eclipse is certainly a reminder that there are great tools. There, are, there is great wisdom. There is great things that come from the past that will help us to through this time of incredible. Um, rooted change in our lives and that there you know we have this uh, the solar eclipse is about our identity and uh mm-hmm. and, and and in this chart um i i would add that it is quite expressive of our values our values and our sense of worth is going to be very important in what we've gained along the way um mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and um and how we use that and i think if you're imbibing and ingraining a sense of importance and value within yourself, then that enables you to be generous and, and, and giving with other people. It's a sense of self that enables us to believe in our own strengths, and that means that we can support others who, who need us, and we can uh, have a sense of value within ourselves and also valuing others too. Yeah, and, and it's interesting because uh, this particular degrees of Taurus um, is, and, and you can see it clustered there, the sun, the moon, uh, that's when a solar eclipse occurs, along with Mercury, which is our ability to, lo- to be logical and reasonable, and uh, the south node, which brings us 
things from the past that we've learned and we've valued along the way, and, and, and our yeah. actions and our activities will be involved in this. And it's interesting, too, because in my research, we were talking about this prior to the show, uh, this mm -hmm. degrees is emphasizing the need to revive the myths, the legends, the mysteries, and the knowledge that we we treasure uh, yeah, from the, the past. Of the, earth, the mystery of the earth and all the energies that come from the magic, huh? Yes, absolutely. And, and I, you know, Taurus is, one thing I know about Taurus, it is so strong, so steadfast, so reliable, and uh, so we can depend on it as this time of of change to our identity begins to occur as the light you know goes out and and we see things in a new light uh, absolutely and i think i think venus the, the ruler of all the taurus the venus in, in gemini is very interesting as well because i think it does allow for the use of intellect and the and the application of, of the mind as well as as well as the heart yeah which is a great combination as if you look at the sun and the mercury you've got the mind and the heart combined there and i think with, with this balance using the balance of the two can bring incredible results for people on a personal level um, at the point of this eclipse, but also on a world level as well. And it, I'd be very interesting to see uh, Venus and Gemini very much about the stock markets and about the financial energy, and I wonder how they'll fluctuate at a time like this. I think there'll be a time of change um, and transition, and I think it will teach people about genuine values, not just about financial values. Yeah, I, that, that, that is one of the things I love so much about Taurus is that, um, it, yes, it is about material values, but it is also about the much deeper values and, yeah. and of, you know, of who we are. The it's about simplifying values, isn't it, Taurus? It's about bringing it right back to the heart, the value of the heart. Yes, it is. And, and um, the things that we value that help us to cope in life, you know. And mm -hmm. the other thing is, and I think it's interesting that you brought up the stock market, is um, also the other thing that's interesting is that um, because Taurus is very much about our finances and, and our financial mm -hmm. uh, systems. I have experienced security and stability. Huh? Yeah, there may be some new creations. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah there may be new innovations. With Venus and Gemini, somebody smart might come along with a really good idea that changes everything. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. And you know what I love about this chart on this solar eclipse is I love the the Pluto uh, the, the, the 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 nice um, configurations uh, with this yeah. lunar with this solar eclipse with Pluto because Pluto is yeah. quite powerful. And when it's in a uh, you know we have, we've already we have already got enough erratic on. A bizarre type of <laughs> energy around us, <laughs> and never mind. Well, definitely, I really agree with you there. I mean, I, I, I wrote a note and I just thought, thank goodness, I looked at the chart and I looked at Pluto and I thought, it's all going to be okay, because Pluto is incredibly powerful, as you say, and, it's been, um, and I think it's been very kind. It's forming some really lovely aspects to Mars and to some of the other planets, and I, I think there's a benevolent power here that may not be obvious, and I got the message um, uh, it, that it will give us a very positive um, influence at the time, and I got the message that this is a test and God will be watching, which is very Pluto and Capricorn, we thought, you know, uh, and I think despite what people are going through and how they may actually feel at, at the point of whatever challenge they may come up with or whatever change or transition, we haven't been forgotten, and I think it's really important to remember that we haven't been forgotten, and Taurus is about love, and I think that's what people have to remember, somebody's watching us. Oh, you just, you're giving me the chills with what you say, because, <laughs> you know. It's good to us, they're protecting us. Yeah, it, it's good to be reminded of that, that there, there, that there are very powerful jewels that are going to surface around this time of change, and that, that, yeah. there, that there is this, yeah. this. And do you think, Andrea, as well, because it's Pluto, it will come from really sort of sources that, that are not obvious, that are very subtle. There may be, um, there may be energies and forces that, work that we don't even recognize on a very human level, on a, a societal level, and they may come from places we just don't re realize or recognize because they're hidden or they're, they're keeping quiet, but they'll have a profound effect upon humanity and our future. Yeah, and and that that is also supported by that, uh, you know, the Saturn uh, that is really nicely aspected to Neptune in the chart. And, yeah, and yeah, the whole chart is one of benevolence, isn't it? Yeah, it really, it really, truly is. And and that um, for us to be, um, you know, reaching out to each other at this time for helping each other through this time of transition, no matter where in the world we may be. And uh, is is certainly going to be 
you know, people pulling together. That's what I see this chart. People, yeah. people pulling and, together. And a time of faith and of, of emotional generosity of Taurus, of emotional giving, of not holding back, of not restricting oneself in the expression of love or in, in the exercising of positive, constructive personal power. Yeah, and do you know, do you know, Sharon? One of the things that I I really uh, thought was interesting about this is, and again, in researching and you know, uh, trying to bring together everything I could to to bring to the show today. Um, one of the things that I realized that it is it is truly imperative at this time that we are clear to ourselves of where our starting point is. Yes. And where it's coming honesty from. Honesty and self-connection and self-realization and, as you say, honesty, absolutely, you've just hit the nail on the head, that we're clear about our motives because with Pluto retrograde and Saturn retrograde, unclear motives will bring difficult results. Right, right. And so, but what, once, uh, as, as you're saying, once we're clear um, of our direction, the energy that, that will be released will be so powerful and forceful um, yeah. it, it's going to astound us, and and there's no, yeah. s it, so it, it would be very important that we do pause, and that we do take the time to really realize what is our foundation, what is it that we wish to build upon, and because yeah. um, there there are going to be, you know, an eclipse is interesting, and I always highly recommend um, that we sort of pause during this time and just let it show us, you know, let us align with it. Let us uh, just sort of step into it rather than fly over it. <laughs> Yeah, and really focus upon it because this kind of chart deserves focus and you will be rewarded with the focus because it's a chart that needs that very singular focus. It's like, it, it, it's like an arrow or, or a sharp tool. It's, it's got to be honed and used properly yes. to be effective. Right, right. And it's interesting because, you know, Taurus brings in that energy of success. You know, it is one that uh, is very methodical, very grounded. And, and, and it typically, if you, if you want to rely on uh, someone, Taurus, somebody with that tor type of energy yeah. is, is very reliable. <laughs> right, absolutely. And uh, it's interesting because the Sabian symbol for this uh, solar eclipse is wisps of wind-like clouds streaming across the sky. And, and it is described as, you know, like winds and uh, wind clouds and haze. So you see this fast movement of, of wind, air, and uh, it, it does... It does sort of give us that um, emphasis of, of things are moving yeah. very fast. However... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. It, it's a powerful engine and it can go a long way. Right. properly. Yes, very, Definitely. very much. That's a lovely symbol. I like, I like that image, Andrea. Yeah, I, I thought that... I love the Sabian symbols and... Um, so do I. Yeah. The, <laughs> I, was, uh, I always think of going back to Saturn and Scorpio. My image is just a Sabian symbol, but I love images. And Saturn and Scorpio to me is somebody digging up a tomb and finding treasure. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, excavating the authority of the archaeologists archeologi and going down and bringing up treasure. I love imagery and pictures because it can say so much more than words in some ways, can't it? Yeah, and, and this... this this symbol does speak to us of the insecurity and the instability that does surround us, but it, and if we try to avoid it, that is if only we tr try to avoid the commitment and responsibility that's, um, that's evident. That's a karmic aspect, isn't it? Fascinating. If we, right. we can dodge this, it will find us. Right, right. And, and, and at the same time, it is reminding us that um, not to rush, in, rush, as we talked about before, into any yeah. situations, um, but it does emphasize the importance of staying calm and yeah. and, and yeah. holding steady in the midst of, of this temporary change, and um, which is represented. It's sort of t you know I was I came into the show today, and the, the wind is so strong outside, and I'm uh, trying to maneuver with crutches down the sidewalk. I said I hope it doesn't <laughs> blow me over. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can't let that happen. To you. No. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> but you, you, you sort of get the gist of it. The winds are strong, and it, and yeah. it is sort of picking us up and delivering us, uh, you know, change from one place to another. And uh, yeah. and uh, you know, all eclipses do speak to us. Of, they you do. Know. And I was thinking, sorry about the wind, but I was just thinking, you know, that this whole chart is sort of saying, if the wind blows you, relax and allow yourself to go with it because you hurt yourself a lot less if you just let go. That's right, right. And <laughs> that's true. You go into it. I'm not the client thinking you did that, Andrea. No. <laughs> on, a, on a metaphor. 
metaphorical level, it's a nice image, you know, that if you just, like, children never seem to hurt themselves because they're very relaxed when they fall. Whereas if we tense and we try and fight it, it will just, it'll just, it'll, 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 it'll cause tension within our bodies and could bruise us a bit. Whereas if we just kind of chill and just relax and say, okay, these changes are going to happen, let them sweep through us. The wind will knock us gently to the floor and we'll find we're fine. Yes, and, you know, it's interesting because, you know, as we move forward with these winds of change, so to speak, uh, we do, we're, you know, getting closer to the end of the show. I think we've got about five minutes, and I want to make sure that we we talk about that lunar eclipse that does follow the solar eclipse, the second lunar eclipse of the spring of 2013, and it occurs on May 24th, and it is at four degrees of Sagittarius, and it is, again, a north node, and here's the chart and we can see that lunar eclipse up at about 11 uh, 11 o'clock um, and you know um, and on the top left part of the chart and the, there's that blue crescent up there which is four degrees Sagittarius and this is also a very inspiring lunar eclipse because it does take us forward it, you know both of these lunar eclipses are, are providing us with the benefits of forward movement and uh, it, it is fully visible from North America and the moon yeah the, really the moon is just barely grazing the earth's shadow so it's what we call a penumbral eclipse it, it, it's not and, and any major, I know a lot of the uh, uh, astrologers online are saying that how can you call this eclipse? Because it's it seems so well, it's minor. A, it's a little eclipse. Yeah, it is. It's a little little <laughs> one. Right, right. And 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 as we as we look at it, um, uh, let's first talk about that. Um, you know, the symbolism of this uh, lunar eclipse is imagine. You know, the energy around this is of an old owl that's sitting alone on the branch of a excuse me, of a tree. And yeah, that's, really, that's a lovely image, isn't it? That's such a, a Sagittarian kind of image, isn't it? But also it kind of responds to the old Saturn sort of uh, present at the moment, that kind of sense of uh, self-sufficiency and of pondering. Yeah, it, it, it really does. And pondering, you know, looking ahead. And, and it, you know, what I what I get from this chart is the, what I, the feeling I get that... Um, there is going to be a lot going on. There is going to be a lot of uh, emotional projections, and uh, I think it will be a little unnerving. Um, yeah, I with, think so. Right. I think it, it, the other the other two eclipses are very fixed, and they're very. What you see is what you you'll see, and you'll understand the structure and the energies associated. This it kind of allows for more flexibility and more changeable, but that also can make us feel a little less stable whilst it's occurring. Right, right, and um, it'll be difficult to stay on the path that you've decided to take because of of the amount of you know it's sort of like this jittery feeling of okay, yeah. uh, I want to go. Th- I I've decided to go there, and then yet there's all these little things that. As you said, unnerving. Sagittarius <laughs> changing your journey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you thought you were going that way, but it's time to change your journey. And this eclipse, Sagittarius is saying, well, things may not be as set in stone as you thought they were. You may have to be a little bit adaptable, huh? Yeah, yeah. And you, you, and and it will give us that ability to be adaptable. However, it does remind us to keep the faith, and it does remind yeah. us to to I stay. Do like that. Right, stay stay focused on what we believe in. So this full moon lunar yeah. eclipse does it does shed light of it, which is very inspiring to stay mm-hmm. stay the course. You know, this is what you've decided yeah. on. This is what you believe in. This is what the light has of this uh, full moon lunar eclipse has brought. And yeah. um, and I and I do want to I do. Um, did you want to add anything? Because we're just about to the end of our time. And okay. Not just that I think it's a, a lovely energy, and I love the Jupiter conjunct Venus conjunct Mercury. I think it's very beneficial, and it's in, indicative of, of uh, higher powers and of uh, benevolence and of faith. Yeah, I, I I would have to agree on that with you, because, you know, Gemini... Nice energy, huh? Yeah, very, very nice energy, and very expressive, and um, a lot of communication, which would would really be very insightful and helpful for people to yes. express what's in their hearts. Yeah. And uh, Absolutely, I get wise words and a benevolent leader, which is a very positive thing, something the world needs, I think. Yes, absolutely. Well, I, I do want to uh, say thank you so much, Sharon, for joining us 
um, way across the world in, in helping oh, us. Oh, it's a pleasure, Andrea, as usual. It's lovely to speak to you. I enjoy it so much. It's great. And well, and I, I know I got a lot of really nice emails from, from our viewers, how much they appreciated hearing from you on the show. So thank you so much. And uh, oh, you've done a great job as usual, Andrea. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. And I want to say thank you to everybody who's watched. Thanks for watching Turn to the Stars. We hope you have a really wonderful week, and we'll see you next week. Take care.